Hello dear students, my name is Shahzad Ahmed. I welcome you all in this video lecture on Introduction to English Literature. In this part of the lecture, I will focus on English literature through edges or periods. Introduction English literature is one of the richest literatures in the world. It has vitality, rich variety and continuity. As literature is the reflection of society, the various changes have come about in the English society from the earliest to the modern times have left their stamp on English literature. When we study the history of English literature, we find that it has passed through certain definite phases, each have marked characteristics termed as ages or periods which are named either after the central literary figure or the important rulers of England, literary movements or termed by the literary historians. It is essential to keep them in mind in order to follow their distinctive characteristics. During the earliest of the phase of English literature started with Anglo-Saxon literature of Angles and Saxons, the ancestors of English race, much before they occupied Britain. Like other nations, they sang at their feasts and songs were about battles, gods, religion, agriculture and their ancestral heroes. Second important period is Middle English or Anglo-Norman period. The Normans defeated the Anglo-Saxon king, Harold XI, at the Battle of Hastings and conquered England. This conquest inaugurated a distinctive new epoch in literature as well as the political history of England. It spurred a wholesome awakening of national life. The people started getting inspired by this new vision of a growth. Next important age is the Renaissance period. This period starts from 1500 and ends at 1600. The Renaissance period brought the revival of learning and it denotes in its uh, broadest sense that the gradual enlightenment of human mind after the darkness of the Middle Ages. The essence of this movement was that man discovered and unveiled his new potentials. Along with the uh, revival of learning, new discoveries took place in like Vasco de Gama circumnavigated the earth and Columbus discovered America. Books started to be printed, the Puritan age, 1600 to 1660. It is also called the age of Milton, who was the noblest representative of the Puritan spirit. The Puritan movement is marked by the rebirth of moral nature of man, uh, which followed the intellectual awakening of Europe. It stood for the liberty of people from the shackles of the uh, design after the darkness of the Middle Ages. The essence of this movement was that man discovered and unveiled his new potentials. Along with the uh, revival of learning, new discoveries took place in like Vasco de Gama circumnavigated the earth and Columbus discovered America. Books started to be printed, the Puritan age, 1600 to 1660. It is also called the age of Milton, who was the noblest representative of the Puritan spirit. The Puritan movement is marked by the rebirth of moral nature of man, uh, which followed the intellectual awakening of Europe. It stood for the liberty of people from the shackles of being men honest and free. However, due to the severe religious principles, poetry became metaphysical. The chief advocate of this school was John Donne, followed by Curley, Herrick and others. The Restoration Period it is called Restoration Age because monarchy was restored in England, the existing poetry renounced and poets were ordered to follow the style of their French contemporaries. They began to imitate hysterical, realistic and was written in a heroic couplet of which Dryden was the supreme master. 18th century literature. It is also called the classical age in literature. As the writers of 18th century in England tried to follow the simple and noble methods of the great ancient writers, they began to be called, you know, classical writers. The English writers rebelled against the fantastic style of writing prevalent in the past ages, and they demanded that poetry, drama, and prose should follow exact rules. But they followed the ancient classical writers only in their external performance. They lacked their sublimity essence and grandeur, so they are called pseudo-classicists. The Romantic Period 
The Romantic Age is the most fruitful period in the history of English literature. It is um, a movement which started against the neoclassical school of thought and was marked by the publication of the lyrical ballads by Wordsworth and Coleridge in 1798. In Romanticism, primary importance was given to the artist's feelings and freedom of expressions. The essence lay in the fact that a literature must reflect all that is spontaneous and unaffected in nature and man, and it must be free to follow its own fancy in its own way. No age in English literature has produced poets as those belonging to this age. The prominent poets like the escapist Keats, the visionary Coleridge, and many other poets, poetical giants like Wordsworth, and Shelley and Saltay and Byron. Victorian age started from 1832. This age is divided into two parts, the early Victorian age and the late Victorian age. Fast transition can be seen from agriculture to industrializations, uh, and uh, power was being transferred from upper to the middle class. And great writers of this age are Charles Dickens, uh, Robert Browning, Matthew Arnold, and Alfred Tennyson, etc., etc. The Modern Age. It started from the beginning of the 20th century. It was against the so-called hypocritical attitude of the Victorian age. The writers wrote about human feelings, world wars, realities, humanitarianism, and pessimism, etc., etc. A few writers used the technique of stream of consciousness in their novels and broke the past traditions and norms. It was the age of monstrous scientific progression, like Darwinism and skepticism brought revolution. Thank you so much. If you have any question, please feel free to ask.